crystal halo. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? With the, okay, okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Stop. Okay, so, hello, my name's Tom Wright. I'm very tall, good. Um, I'm also a Buddhist, and I'm not here to sell Buddhism, but I thought if I talk about it for five minutes, then there'll be less people in the world who will ask me stupid questions. Uh, specifically, the stupid question I get asked often is, so Tom, do you have to wear orange all the time? Uh, Normally by people who can see me when they're asking the question. Uh, another favourite one, this was a guy in a bar, again, who could see me. So, Tom, when you became Buddhist, did you have to shave off all your hair? <laughs> and my favourite one, asked by the same guy in the bar. So, Tom, Tom Wright, when you became Buddhist, did you have to change your name? <laughs> what? What was I called that when I changed religion, I had to change my name to the Sanskrit traditional name of Tom Wright? <laughs> It's understandable the confusion, because there are lots of different kinds of Buddhism, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about all of them. Um, and two Buddhists, if you randomly select them, could be as different as if you randomly selected two Christians. So, uh, lots of different Buddhist traditions uh, will be very different from two different Christians, as you can see. So, um, our particular lot are called SGI, Soccer Gakkai International. And uh, we practice the Buddhism of Nishin Dai Shonin, and there's about 12 million of us in the world, and hopefully none of them in this room to help me out. <laughs> so, uh, when Shakyamuni Buddha, the historical Buddha, started uh, doing his teachings in about the 5th century BC, there was a common belief that if you were really, really good, you would come back as somebody of a slight, high, slightly higher social status. Or, if you were ill, you'd come back as somebody healthy. Or, if you were a woman, you could come back as a man. <laughs> and Shakyamuni said, that is utter bollocks. Um, actually, everybody has infinite power, uh, wisdom, creativity in their lives already. Everybody is already fantastic, although not everybody looks good in spandex. And therefore, all people are worthy of infinite respect, regardless of social status, gender. And what's more, when you use that power to change yourself, it can make amazing changes in the world. And you don't have to be Buddhist to do this. So Martin Luther King, Gandhi went on their spiritual journeys and that affected literally the lives of millions of people. <coughs> um, however, believing that everybody has infinite wisdom and power and uh, it was wonderful, it's very difficult because some people uh, behave like dicks. <laughs> I for people can't see to my right. So, um, so respecting them is really difficult. So how do you live a life where you treat everybody uh, with respect at all times, even if they're behaving like a dick? And sometimes, we doubt our own potential, uh, and we doubt that we can really change the problems that are facing us, and sadness happens. <laughs> so, a Japanese monk called Nishin Daishonin in the 13th century said the way to live like the Buddha is to chant the phrase, Nami Harengikyo, and then live as if everybody is infinitely wonderful. Now, Nami Harengikyo means, I dedicate myself to the belief that all human beings have infinite courage, wisdom, and compassion in their lives, and therefore are worthy of infinite respect, regardless of the behaviour they're currently exhibiting. So you can see why chanting Namya Harengiko is a little bit quicker. <laughs> the theory goes that if you chant this phase with the intention to reveal your potential and uh, to help others to reveal theirs, you can draw forth the wisdom, compassion, and courage inherent in your life, do what we call your human revolution and change things, and then change your life. So here's courage. Uh, if you wanted a better job, for example, you could chant, change the self-doubt that's holding you back in job interviews, and then your external circumstances change, you, may, uh, you might get a better job. And in the case of wisdom, and what could be more wise, the Morgan Freeman, the face of wisdom. Uh, if I was struggling financially, I might chant, draw forth wisdom, decide to get some financial help, go on a debt management program, change my behaviours. So it's not magic, you change something in you, your environment changes. Compassion. Uh, Florence Nightingale there, if I'm arguing with family members, maybe if I draw forth the compassion to wonder what the real uh, issue is that is niggling at them, and get beyond the behaviour and change the situation. And the, uh, another aspect of Buddhism, this particular form of Buddhism that I really like, is earthly desires or enlightenment. And the idea is if you really want something, whatever it is, even if it's chocolate, uh, <laughs> then you chant and you take action and you go for it, and that takes you on a spiritual journey. So wanting things is not a bad thing. Uh, and additionally, because there are no rules about sex, drugs, uh, eating meat, it's up to each of us to decide the best way to create value in your life at each moment. Although Buddhists also get hangovers, uh, so you still have to live with the consequences of your actions. So, uh, the practice is really simple, you chant Nami Harengiko uh, either on your own in your own home or with other Buddhists in the morning and the evening. Uh, you study the writings of Nishun Daishonin and also the writings of uh, our mentor, a guy called Daisaku Ikeda, 
who isn't a god or a guru, who's just somebody who really lives the practice uh, and who we try uh, to bring his spirit into our lives. And then we go out into the world and try and behave as if everybody is infinitely wonderful, which is, of course, easier said than done. Thank you very much.